Good afternoon and welcome to All Hallows Episcopal Church in Wincote for the service of Noonday Prayer. We are thrilled that you are with us. Um, I'm thrilled that Karen Wilson is here to help lead. Good afternoon, Karen. Good afternoon. We are in the Book of Common Prayer on page 103. Our psalm today will be parts of Psalm 119, verses 161 through 168. Uh, we'll take just a moment and then we'll begin. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Portions of Psalm 119. We're going to read it responsibly by whole verse. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous ordinances. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I fulfill your commandments. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees where all my ways are before you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today, there is nobody on our calendar for Holy Women, Holy Men, um, but we do have a reading, and Karen has a reading from Matthew for us. Okay, this is Matthew 11, verses 20 to 24. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, saying thanks be to God after a reading like that makes one wonder what we're being thankful for. As Karen said, as we gathered, I don't envy you giving a, uh, <laughs> a, a meditation on this. But in this moment of meditation, I invite us all to sit comfortably and breathe easily, and to try to let the stress out. It's very interesting. This reading today fits right in the middle of the reading that we will get this coming Sunday. Sunday, our gospel reading is Matthew eleven sixteen 16 through 19, and 25 through 30. What's missing in there is what we have just heard. This is this is one of those readings that when you take it out of context, we we miss some of um, most of the importance of what this reading is. This is in, in Matthew's gospel, we have five great discourses. And this is at the end of the second discourse in Matthew's gospel. Um, which has just followed his sending out the disciples to go preach around the towns um, in the countryside to bring the good news of Jesus Christ 
to them, the good news of the kingdom to them. And this is after they regather and they are, have been telling Jesus, we assume, of their stories. And if you remember the sending out, he tells them, give peace to the house. And if they reject your peace, move on. And so this is some of that, um, that response to what the disciples have told him from their travels around. And as such, um, there were places that they went where the message was not received. And so what Jesus is doing here is reminding us about what happened to those cities um, that in the old days, Sodom, had happened when they when they had received the law of God and they received um, the Abrahamic and Mosaic laws and, and lived under covenant and rejected them and how they were destroyed. And so we're, what Jesus is doing in this is making the equation of you will not live the fullest of life without living under or within the kingdom of God. That is the best place for you as a, as a person to live within the all-encompassing, merciful, compassionate love of God that has been manifest in Jesus Christ. And so whereas this is, this is hard to hear on its surface, when we put it in the context of Jesus wanting them to spread the, the news of the kingdom, and how glorious it is to live within the kingdom of God. You will be at woe. You will be in woe. Um, you will be. Um, you you will not be repentant. You will be um, judged. And so, what this is not pointing to you to us is the the downside, really, although it's there. Of, of living outside the kingdom, what it's trying to raise up is the gloriousness of living within kingdom, with it, living within what God has, has ordained for us. Now, the practical side is, and we'll hear some of this in um, Paul's letter to the Romans on Sunday, is that so often we say we want to live this way and live within these structures, but we end up doing the wrong things anyway. No matter, we keep saying, I want to do this, but then we do this. And, and it goes back and forth like that. Um, it's important always to remember that no matter how many times we have missed the mark, um, on, on living within a kingdom life, that God is always there to say, come on back. You're welcome here. You're loved. I went to the cross for you. So um, take the woes and the, and the warnings seriously, but think about them more as choosing to live the holy, righteous, glorified life within the kingdom. Um, and that we will feel um, worse when we are living outside the kingdom. And I hope that all makes sense because it is a hard reading to hear, uh, but I hope some of the context um, helps with, with where we are in this reading. Um, so why don't we take a few moments and just contemplate what you've heard um, and then uh, maybe think about how we are trying to live into the kingdom um, and into, into all that God has done for us um, through creation, through going to the cross, through rising. Um, I invite us into that place now.
Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. In this moment of prayer and meditation, I invite yours, either aloud in the silence of your hearts or in the comments section. We begin by praying for all those on our parish prayer list. For Martha, Larry, Russ, Amaya, William, Jennifer, Mike, Bill, David, Linda, Judy. For Charlotte, Paul, Bill, Ian, Donald, Karen, Helen. For Gulzar, Nargis, Anselm, Krishna, for Bob and June, for Anne, for Cindy, Ben, Phyllis, Jack, Bob, Robin, Mark, for William, Alexandra, Frank, Lindsay, Mackenzie, Sean, the Levitt family, for John and Laura. We pray for all those who are hungry, homeless, those who are living in precarious life situations. We pray for the unemployed and the underemployed. We pray for those who struggle with their mental health. We pray for our world, for an ending of violence everywhere, especially an end to gun violence in our streets that has come close to home in Philadelphia this past weekend. We pray for a turning of hearts and a respect of the dignity of every human being who is made in the image of God. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and an end to the strife in Sudan. We pray for an easing of tensions between nations of the world. We pray for our communities of Wincote, Jenkintown, Abington, and Cheltenham, and our leaders and our first responders. We pray for the church, for the universal church, the Episcopal and Anglican communions, our diocese, and our parish, all hallows that we may continue to show the love of Christ in this world. We remember all who have died, that they may have a place in God's eternal kingdom. Especially do we remember the saints of all hallows. And we give thanks. 
We give thanks for the blessings of this day. We give thanks for seasonable weather. We give thanks for birthdays and anniversaries. We give thanks for blessings that we see, blessings that we know. We give thanks for the people of all hallows, that they, as they work so hard, continue to serve Jesus faithfully. I give thanks for my friend Karen. And we pray for Karen as she travels. All these prayers we lift up to you, O God, in the sure and certain hope that you hear and will act as is best for us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. What a joy it is to join you in prayer. It is a privilege for us um, to do this with you. Um, just taking a few moments in the middle of the day to calm our hearts and our minds and um, and spend time in prayer. It is um, something I look forward to, um, and we are thankful that you have joined us. We will be back again tomorrow, joined by our friends from St. Peter's in the Great Valley. Um, it is always fun to, to get with them. Um, our service on Sunday is at 10 o'clock in the church, and uh, we are on YouTube now as our live stream. So please, um, if you can't be in person, which we really hope you are, at least join us that way. Um, please pray for, for those that are transitioning in life. Um, continue to hold them close to your hearts. If you need anything, please reach out to the office and we will, we will be happy to help you or if we can and at least have a conversation. Know that you are cared for and that you are welcome always. Thank you, Karen, for helping today. You're welcome. Thank you, Chris. We hope you have a great day. Be at peace and pray for peace.